We're exploring the history of Niagara Falls. How it started, how it's used, and how it became one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world. Niagara Falls is sandwiched between America and Canada, containing the most powerful waterfalls in the world. For us, this is one of our most interesting videos because we are doing two countries in one day. There's some beef about which side is better, the American side or Canadian side in terms of views. So we are excited to make that determination for ourselves. Niagara Falls is actually three different waterfalls. We just learned this for the first time. We thought Niagara Falls referred to all of the falls, but nope, three different waterfalls in one. The American and Bridal Veil Falls are on the United States side of the park. The largest waterfall, the one that draws all the crowds here, is called Horseshoe Falls and is technically on the Canadian side. The best place to view the falls on the American side is at Prospect Point. We'll see what the Canadian side has to offer, but we got here first thing in the morning and our view was pretty amazing. I mean, that rainbow was spectacular. It's really hard to beat that view. Now, apparently the best views are on the Canadian side, but we'll see about that. I don't know how well the mic is picking up the sound of these falls, but it is incredibly loud here. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you say something? I, I can't hear you. Haha. Uh -huh. You might be wondering how these falls were formed. The short answer is glaciers. The falls were formed when melting glaciers created massive freshwater lakes, which we now call the Great Lakes. Lake Erie ran downhill into Lake Ontario. The rushing waters carved out a river in their descent, and then they went over a huge steep cliff-like formation and voila! You can get a really good sense of their formation when you see the falls from an aerial view. These falls became popular by a very unlikely suspect. Native Americans living in the Niagara region were most likely the first people to see Niagara Falls. But the first European to document it was a French priest Father Louis Hennepin. During a 1678 expedition, he was overwhelmed by the magnitude and beauty of Niagara Falls. When Hennepin returned to France, he wrote an account of his travels, which quickly inspired other people to come here as well. If you want to get the best views of the falls, definitely come here early in the morning before the crowds come in, because it feels like an obstacle course right now. It sure does. Believe it or not, Niagara Falls is the honeymoon capital of the world. Napoleon Bonaparte's younger brother, Jerome, made it popular. In 1804, he honeymooned with his American bride at the falls. And rumor has it that quickly after, honeymoons at Niagara Falls became increasingly popular. There's a wedding happening right behind us, which is a uh, good luck for them because they are in the honeymoon capital of the world, so they can get married and then go have their honeymoon. One of the biggest draws to this area for us is the ability to walk between two countries. Funnily enough, the bridge that people originally used to do that was called the Honeymoon Bridge. The Honeymoon Bridge was a bridge that connected America and Canada, but in 1938 it collapsed due to an ice jam. What we're about to go on is Rainbow Bridge, and it was built 50 feet above the water to avoid ice jams. I'm excited to walk into Canada. I really have no idea what to expect. How cool will it be to be able to just walk across a bridge and go into another country? We've been in line for over 30 my minutes hat. now. We are out here roasting in the sun, just cooking. That took forever. I never want to do that again. <laughs> Whoa, okay. All right, I see what all the fuss is about. I'm gonna say I like the American side better because there are more opportunities to see the waterfalls up close on the American side. Okay, we'll say on the Canadian side, you get a better view of like the falls in their entirety. But if you wanna see the falls up close, America's where it's at. Now that we've been to both sides, we gotta talk about how two countries share the same power source. To give you a little taste, Niagara Falls generates about one fourth of the electricity for New York and Ontario. Today, the power plants on both the Canadian and American side generate up to 2.4 million kilowatts of electricity. The Niagara Parks Power Station has a light and sound show called Current, which explains how the power plants work. 
Well, I'm gonna say it, those are the best waterfalls I've ever seen in my life. It doesn't get any better than that. It sure does not. And the history is phenomenal as well when you just think about how people first came across it and how it just made tourism boom in this whole area. And like, it's still happening today, which is just remarkable. I'm curious, which side do you think is best, American or Canadian in terms of views? Comment below and let us know. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye. I had to do it. Okay. <laughs>